Okay, maybe put in here also. Uh, or Heritage Commission. Yeah. We probably want to say with the historical society or heritage commission if it's established. In in lieu of a heritage commission, uh, wouldn't the historical society sort of take on some of those roles? Well, that's what this is saying now. Consider establishing a procedure to consult with the historical society, but I'll put or heritage commission if established to review applications. And then Russ, you were gonna add something there, I think, review applications for demolition permits and what else? Well, it's um, is what um, Jessica was talking about that, you know, the, the, you could start, even if they didn't have heritage commission, the planning board could ask, you know, for a site plan review or, or any, anything that involved doesn't even have to involve demolition of buildings. It could be a reuse of a building. Right. I want to see for demolition after, permits or other yeah. development projects. Or, or, or um, I'll think of some. <laughs> for now, I'll put in and other development projects. Yeah. Right, because development projects could or, either or reuse. Be I mean, for example, um, you know, you get permits to. Um, redo Foster's Tavern. That's a historic building. That old um, Winnipesaukee house has been mm -hmm. converted. I don't know how many times, but something like that. If they were going to do a major renovation on that, would it be worthwhile to just talk to the historic commission and at least get the historic commission to talk with the developer, who at a minimum talk to the person who's proposing the work? Sure. Uh, to and they, you know, there's no teeth in it, but at least but, but at least it. it's knowledge and and yeah. letting the owner or the developer, uh, the contractor know what the history of the building is and what should be preserved and, and make suggestions. Right. And I think many times around here, uh, developers will like that. They'll yeah. Like see value in many that. cases, they follow suit yeah. as to what to uh, preserve what they can. Kind of like the old fire station in Lakeport, right? <laughs> yeah. So should yeah. I, I should have, should I have a planning board on here too in the responsibility column? Um, you don't have you you have yeah you need planning board in the just get selectmen on there. Right? Uh, you've got uh, selectmen building department Alton historical and it should be planning board as well. Okay, got that. Yep. Okay. Very good. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. We all done with, with chapter four and the action plan. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I want to get rid of that. So next we will go to infrastructure. Bob for information technology. Yeah. So take it away, Bob. Chapter six. Well, I didn't have much, anything to do with the uh, first couple of sections here. No, we're on 6.5. Information technology is the only one in here that's ready. Yours is the only one that's ready. I uh, I had some challenge in writing this in that if I were writing it for a technical audience, the approach would be much different than the one that I took and that I'd get into some detail about the, the different uh, levels of uh, cellular technology that, that are available and what, what some of the detailed uh, decision points are. And so what I tried to paint was a picture of where we're going from the consumer's point of view, mm -hmm. not so much from the technology uh, end of it. So uh, the, the first part having to do with uh, telecommunications got into that. The other part having to do with the town facilities of IT, I sat down with, uh, with uh, Josh and basically led him through the process of describing what we currently have and where things are headed. 
and more of an inventory than uh, anything else. So that's the overview of, of what's there. Uh, the first section uh, describing uh, what, tele, tele, what uh, IT means uh, in terms that the public could, uh, would readily understand and, uh, and how we broke things out. I thought it was great. I thought you had a you had a tough task, as you said, to find that middle ground between user friendly and technical. And there are just places you have to be technical in this. So, thank you. Um, like I said, it was a challenge. I also haven't written anything in anger in twenty years. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, the, the way the tele telecommunications have evolved from the public's point of view. Uh, I tried to capture uh, what that is and lay it down in simple terms of where the physical media uh, uh, really defined what people were able to get and uh, where things are headed now with the evolution of fiber optics along with higher capability cellular technology, not in Alton these days, but in other parts of the country where the marriage between those two are becoming the foundation piece for most people's telecommunications uh, facilities. And beyond that, the uh, companies that are currently doing business in this area and what's likely to happen in the future, one of the things that is beginning to take root is action of the electric uh, utilities becoming involved in providing telecommunication services in rural areas. Other parts of New Hampshire are taking advantage of that, not to my knowledge in, in Alton currently. Uh, and finally, the topology of Alton is not cellular, uh, cellular communications best friend. And what's happened, and I didn't write this down, but what's happened is uh, when there were attempts to put additional towers in town, uh, there was a hue and cry of NIMBY. Uh, mm -hmm. And it was very difficult for them to get a second, another tower put in the, uh, near the intersection of uh, 28A and 28. Uh, and it's not a very high tower. You can't even see it from the road or anything. Uh, the, the problem is that because of the topology in Alton, the ability to go to the higher capacity cellular technologies of G5 and even uh, 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 G4 uh, needs more towers. I think the attitude of the public is likely to change because uh, I'm paying uh, almost seventy dollars a month for my internet capability. Other parts of the of the state, you can get the same level of service for less than fifty a month. So I think there's going to be some loosening up of uh, public pressure for cell towers. Uh -huh. And that's something that's likely to occur over the 10 year period. That's something that will be in the action plan. Yeah. So without reading the thing out loud, that's what uh, I try to capture. Uh -huh. So I had a question. Um, the, um, well, could you define what the last mile is? I think I know what it is, but does everybody know what that is? Well, I'm sorry. The last mile? But, you know, the last mile is from where you get from the high capacity carrier uh, to, to where it's going. Yeah, it just might be useful if the, uh, you got it in quotes. Then quotes, it, okay. Yeah. Um, and then I had an, in that same paragraph, um, one approach is being explored in Alton is for the electric power providers to supply. Who's exploring that? Is that the power companies or is it us or is it who? 
Who is it? I, I believe it's the power companies. Power companies. In, in Alton, we have two power companies that is the uh, co-op yeah. and in East Alton, where I live, it, it's a Wolfboro power. And, and we don't have any um, Eversource, right? I have Eversource. Yeah. Pardon me? I have Eversource where I am. You have Eversource? Yeah. Down south. Yeah. It, to, near, near New Durham? I'm down by Mount Prospect. I'm down oh, between yeah. Mount Prospect and Mount South part of it. Yeah. We have ever sourced down there. So, it's probably, so there's three power providers. Yeah. Yeah. And are they all looking at that? No, I know ever source definitely is. And okay. And I think electric co op is. Yeah. So maybe to clarify in there, just say the uh, utilities, the power, uh, the electric utilities are, ex are the ones that are exploring it. Yeah, they're running. I know they're running fiber because they own they own most of the poles. So right. they're running fiber, and they got some of the stimulus money for that. So there's more than being explored. They're actually doing it. They're doing it. Yeah, they're right. doing it now. Yeah. Okay. So maybe that ought to be it's reflected in there. Good. Um, Are you I, able to see that? Coherent information on this stuff is very difficult. You. So I tried to edit this. One approach being explored by the electric. Power providers is to supply Wi-Fi service directly to customers in Alton using various providers fiber with high bandwidth, short range 5G equipment mounted on their utility poles. Does that I think that clarifies it? And, it, and as uh, Bill was saying, they're actually doing it. Yeah, it's actually being built out by one of the providers that we know of, EverSource. EverSource is doing it. Yeah. So did, maybe somebody could send me a sentence for that. You wanna? Or, or just tell me what to type in now. I don't. <laughs> yeah. I think what you had, you just say um, something about that there's three uh, utilities, public utilities, uh, power utilities in town, and at least one of them is exploring this, is, is, actually, is actually building this uh, infrastructure out now. Uh, and I don't know that I need to mention that there's some federal funding involved in that. Yeah, this is stimulus money. Yeah, or maybe I do mention that. I thought we. I thought you said that somewhere else already. That, yeah. At the same time, Fred, you introduced it that way. At the same time, federal funding is being made available with the goal of providing high cost, uh, providing cost effective high capacity broadband service to rural areas, and then it says one approach being explored. So it's not just being explored. I'll, fi I'll figure out some more than later. So I was reading through this. Is if, if let's say that all the utilities jump on the bandwagon, they use federal free money that we printed somewhere, um, <laughs> sent out. Um, do we see all of these services? Uh, what, you know, um, Everything that you're talking about, Wi-Fi, internet, uh, cable, uh, do you see them all being serviced through this box on the well, pole, this uh, 5G uh, box? Is I, that where I, it's going to go? I purposefully uh, avoided, I think that's just Verizon. I, I purposefully avoided getting into that because I think there's going to be a battle between the, the TDS breeze line uh, class of provider and the, the providers that are doing this internet service over the utilities. Uh, the purpose of the utility involvement was specifically to bring high-speed internet to rural areas. Uh -huh. And Alton, the majority of Alton, I would call semi-rural. So I think there's going to be some yeah. stuff going on there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. I, I don't know exactly. The, the, the fiber that they're running is basically fiber to your house, you know, like one gig plus or whatever fiber yep, right. directly to your house for your internet. The I think the, the 5G, is, that's the build out that Verizon's doing, which is the, it's cellular, really. Correct. But that's, that's and that's the tower. So you talk of two different things, mm -hmm. you know, cool. um, I mean, it, the, the same, you know, the- So we're the, still gonna have towers. Yeah. Because, and well, the, five, five, and we're gonna have oh, glass cable on all the-, the, and, the and the fiber feeds the towers. So, you know, it doesn't, Correct. people call, it goes from, it goes from your phone to the tower. Then through to another tower to the other end. That's how it, it communicates. So that's the five G. So I just don't want to confuse the two because well, the five G is cellular and the high speed internet, where the power companies are getting involved in the 
but, but, but the cellular, cellular companies are now, uh, for example, um, uh, what's the one? One of them is uh, promoting a $50 a month uh, high speed internet to you, where they provide the 5G service to your house, essentially, and you have a box that converts the 5G into Wi Fi. Right. And, and, and that's who you pay your bill to. Right. It'll do everything. And, it's, and, and it will do everything. In a lot of cases, electricians in new construction are using 5G um, wire and boxes and, and the cat six, five. The cat yeah. five. Cat five or cat six. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And they're putting that all in automatically. Correct. When you put yeah. that all in there, Perks so available. that it's in, that it's so that it's there and ready to go yeah. when it's tied in. Yep. Yeah. So I guess what I'm saying is, is that after we say all this stuff, what do we think is going to happen? You know, and what should we do about it? That's that's where I'm getting to. I, I, mm -hmm. I, I know. <laughs> you're you're going from like having no choices you're to to having a lot of choices of high speed internet. But, but I right. think the market's gonna it's gonna really it's gonna open up. It might saturate. You know, it's gonna open up. Sure. It, well, the, the impact is that the prices will come down. Yeah. My, my $70 a month bill right now will go down under 50. Mm -hmm. Your semi, mine's 180. No, no, no. Well, well, he's talking about one. Yeah, but I can go to internet. I, I'm, I'm buying TV, ca uh, cable TV, telephone, and internet. Yeah. I think oh. we're around 120, 125. Well, with TDF. But, but my cable bill one month unannounced to me went from 200 to 220. Oh. At which point I said, never mind. And I mm -hmm. uh, took out everything but the internet. Mm -hmm. But you're just you're using internet. So you're streaming. You're just streaming. I'm streaming. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I pay for the streaming services, yeah. but, but that's uh, a la carte and up to me. Mm -hmm. and it's not dictated by the cable company. Mm -hmm. Right. But I, I think what we're looking at is, yes, you, you have the, the cable companies that are running the high speed fiber internet. Mm -hmm. telephone companies that are running the high speed and the electric companies that are correct running. that's right and then you also have the 5g cellular networks so you basically have four networks that are being built you know they're either will be built out or are being built out in the area so mm -hmm. lots so of i'm choices. thinking that what this is not doesn't have in here is what you're just saying is is, is where this is all the background here's where we think it's going yeah. mm -hmm. and what does the town need to do well, and I, I don't know if this is all part of it. COVID changed a lot of this. Yeah. You know, people working from home, people just, you know, call centers just being evacuated and everyone working from sure. home. The demand for high-speed internet at home, it, and then it, it, that affected where the, the build-out for these and the electric companies and everybody else getting involved, like we can run that, you know, and, mm -hmm. and getting it built out, which well, I, think, I think that had a lot to do to push it. Push going it going back to- Definitely uh, did. To, to the question of what does the town do? Well, one specific area is the question of uh, cell phone uh, penetration, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, where, where the higher capacity uh, cell access is, is more widely provided. Mm -hmm. That's something that the town can actively participate in. Sure. The rest of it, I think the market's gonna decide. Right. It'll dictate itself and what people choose. Right. I think I think the uh, so the uh, able companies are, are an endangered species. To tell you the truth, T TDS is probably in better shape than Breeze Line at this point. Yeah, if they're still running off of regular, yeah, because the cable companies use bits. They send so many bits down the road, and everyone shares it. Where the fiber is. Well, it's all so you're using, is put whatever fiber. you buy, that's what you're using. Well, TDS is fiber. Right, they're all fiber. That's right. Right, they convert everything into fiber. Right. Yeah, yeah but, but BreezeLine is, is putting a lot of fiber in and not so much coax. Right. Mm -hmm. so, so. <laughs> so in terms of action, I think the, the main action the town takes is making sure that we uh, don't uh, lapse into the same kind of uh, pr protective uh, shell that we had five years ago with regard to the evolution of cellular. Mm -hmm. I think we open that up. Well, we do have um, siting 
site plan rules that we put together for cell towers. And that, so are you Maybe suggesting that, be... that the planning board ought to revisit those? Yeah. Then you want us to put that in here then. Do we know how many cell towers are in are there currently are three, in Ireland? Three. Three. And we get some coverage from Wolfboro and Guilford right. and yep. so forth. Right. Yep. I know of two. Where's the third one? There's one in one in Alton. That's all. Russ, there's one in Alton Bay, uh, Prospect Mountain. Prospect yep. Mountain, yeah. Yep. And and the one at uh, the intersection of 28 and 28 and 28A. Right. That's that's one you you said you can't, but you can see that one. You, uh, you can't see. Uh, you can see it from the lake. Yeah, if you're out yeah, in the lake, yeah. you, know. you, you can you can see when you're out in the lake, you can see it. And uh, I know you can see it if you look for it on 28. It's because you can see it right over Jedry's. Oh. If you're if you're driving and you look out towards Jedry's, you can see it. I, that one I know about. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. if, if, even if um, say we, um, you know, everything gets delivered on by fiber optic cable to the poles and all that gets spread out. Do the do you, do you need the any new cell towers after that? Do you need any new ones? If everybody can get, if you can get connected through your, you know, the, the, the wires that come into your house, do you need the, the cell towers? Yes. Or is it still the, the dead spots when you're driving you're around? You're still going to need it for your cell phones. Still going to need it for your cell phones, but they're also, they're pushing products where you can have the cellular come into your house wirelessly and do all of your internet and everything right off of, almost like a hotspot. Right. You know, but, right but, but that, that but only works if you're home. Yeah, but that's only if you're home. What if you're driving around? You're I was just going to say that. If you're driving around, it doesn't help you anywhere towers. else. Right. But if you need more towers, that's why you need more towers. Is, that's why you need more towers. That's okay. why you need more towers. So perfect. those won't be obsolete or anything. So I, I, if, if, if you could, I mean, I'm, I don't know how to do this, but if you could almost write something up like that, that's, that's where we see what will happen. So there will be a need for more towers. More towers. Even well, if all well, this other said, stuff gets happened. Well, he says that here additional towers are needed to support higher bandwidth 5G servers. The bottom of six three. Six three. Yeah. Let's see. Do we miss that? Yeah. We have that here. Due to the varied topography. But due to the varied topology. Right. As I was reading about mobile phone cover coverage has always been problematic. Okay. So I got it, it. It's in there. It's but the Russ, where you were going, you might notice that we don't have any action plan items for this yet. I wanted you to have this discussion before I try to do that. So, you know, to go with what you were saying, what what do we need to put in the action plan to to make sure the town supports the need for additional towers? All right. It may so it might mean revisiting the the uh, yeah. um, site plan regulations for cell towers. There's a whole section in our mm -hmm. reg. I, I I haven't looked at those. Do do you do you allow them everywhere in town in the zoning? Um, no. Because that's probably the more restrictive bottleneck than site plan regs. One of the uh, assumptions that I have is that with yeah. the new technology, the cell towers don't have to be quite as high as, as they used to be. Because mm -hmm. by definition, they're, they're taking care of a, a smaller uh, area. And uh, I think that's one of the things that will allow the, the uh, you know, the, the advent of more cell towers than what we currently have. So cell towers aren't going to go away? Don't, uh, they're no. not going to go away, but they won't be the same as they have been. Do, do, do I remember correctly that for 5G, we need more towers, but shorter? But probably, probably shorter. So, so maybe the action plan item is something like to review the land use regulations to make sure that they something about find the right balance between protection of the town and service. Yeah. Okay. I didn't try to I try to relate what might happen ten years from now. Mm -hmm. Well, with the way if if we're. Um, 
a progressive town, you know, trying to think ahead. You're trying to avoid problems before they crop up. You don't want to be saying, you know, we've got a housing shortage. What do we do? Right. Uh, and, you know, so now we're going to have, we got um, um, regulations that inhibit our ability to be connected to the world right. properly. Mm -hmm. right. uh, we should be jumping on that as a, as a, as a, as a work item. Well, I'm not sure. I mean, do you know that, that, that the regulations are standing in the way or, I mean, they, I was need, just... they need to be reviewed. They were, yeah. Tara, they were, they were put in um, mainly because not to facilitate the location of the towers, but to control the location of the towers. Right. And it, it was coming from a NIMBY approach more than a development approach. Yeah. yeah. So currently they're only allowed in the rural zone. Which is a lot of the town. Yeah, that's a lot. That's but, it. But, but the nature of the demand for, for, for that cellular service is changing. And That's kind of backwards, isn't it? I mean, they're only allowed in the zone where the people aren't. <laughs> right. right. Mm -hmm. what's, what's wrong with this picture? Well, well, well it's because or, people didn't want to see the towers. Well, 10 or 15 years ago, cellular was only mobile. And now it's no longer only mobile. But right. wouldn't you rather see the tower where you already have development? I don't know. So I, I think, yeah, well, good language to review it and make sure it's the right balance. That's key to, you know, as far as the signal and everything else. It's not. But and one of the things you could do is you could go to the providers and, yeah. that, you know, go to the contractors who put these things up. Right. In fact, there's maps already mm -hmm. of where they should go. Right. They, they know where the holes are. Where they need them to be. Where right? the best places on, on Where they're going to work the best. Right. right. Where they get the best signal. Yeah. yeah. The regional planning commissions have had money like twice in the last 10 years to map all of that. So. Yeah, they, it's the triangle that they use. That they have all that. Set them up, so. I used to do environmental impact statements for EPA, mm -hmm. and we were always reactive instead of being, instead of going out and saying, <clears throat> if you want to uh, do a certain type of activity, mm -hmm. these are great places to do it. And if you were to pick these places, your regulatory hoops that you'd have to jump through would be a whole hell of a lot less than if you just pick it and then we have to react to it. So, <laughs> right. But nobody wanted to be proactive like that. Mm -hmm. That was a problem that I think it was with the EIS program. So it's always- And that all, sometimes happens. It's all, it's mostly, it comes from a position of no, mm -hmm. you know? No. Yeah. And I, and that was when I was 40 years younger. So, you know, I was doing that. So. We were quite um, optimistic or idealistic at the time. Sure. <laughs> Looking ahead. Uh, yeah, right. So anyway, uh, yeah, the, I think this is, this is good. Um, but if we can extract out of this, you know, this is what we see in the future. And, I, and you did get it. You did put it in there. Um, then the action plan is, you know, what do we do to be ahead of the game? So we don't obstruct, because um, this is going to be a competition between towns. Um, when um, if you're looking up of a place to locate, right, to live, you want to have good schools and good internet service. Yep. Yeah, that's things. what everybody asks. That's, internet service. That's, those are the first questions people ask. All right. Those are the two things. So, what's your internet speed and what are the schools like? Yeah. And we just can't be. A, a, a town of old people that die off and we get smaller and smaller and smaller. <laughs> so uh, in terms of action plans, uh, things that we've identified uh, first is the uh, revisiting of the uh, cell, cell tower rules, if you will. Right. Mm -hmm. What's the title of that? Um, all right, in our, entitled, in our, uh, so it's in the zoning ordinance. Yeah. It's section 603, uh, personal wireless service facilities ordinance. Yes. Personal wire service, so 603, okay. So, Maybe um, when I take a quick look at that and write the action item, I might 
bounce some additional language off you to put in here, because if it looks like it's really restrictive, we might want to go ahead and say that in the narrative to, to explain why we're saying it needs reviewing. Sure. Okay. I'm just gonna highlight this so I remember we're doing something there. Okay. So we're still talking about infrastructure. I guess we're talking about where we stand with the other chunks of infrastructure. What? Uh, well, we, he I think he was done here. You have all this municipal services stuff that. You'll also want to drive some action items from that. In the in the uh, the IT business, yeah. yeah. Right. The municipal services uh, again. What uh, Josh and I tried to capture were the um, uh, cross-functional and function-specific uh, facilities that are being. Uh, provided by the town for the town. And uh, what we didn't do was uh, identify specific uh, actions uh, that need to be identified in the future. Figured that that stuff would come out uh, through the review process. Or maybe what, maybe we could generalize it. Maybe the thing to do is to generalize it and put in action item that says the town needs to make sure that IT is a piece of the capital improvement program and gets adequately funded to keep up. One of the things that uh, I can envision is that, uh, that the emphasis on uh, what Josh does currently becomes uh, somewhat greater and uh, it may be uh, a, a growth of that department, so to speak. That uh, may, maybe he has more contracted services reporting to him, mm -hmm. or there's more than one person running the whole show. I don't know how to capture that exactly. I mean, do you see, for example, um, right now we're using a, a screen kind of setup. Do you see that the, the meeting rooms would be more you know, set up with real live screens and, and live uh, cameras and good sound and all that. Like a widescreen. Like That's screen. a possibility, yes. So, and we just put that in up at the, the office up in Center Harbor. Especially here, yeah. Yeah, and it was, you know, you get the, it's all very crisp. Everybody can hear. And it's easy to use. It's not, you don't have a whole bunch of, this is kind of cobbled together to make it mm -hmm. work. That, that thing, you just sit there and it's there. Right, right. Um, we have been talking more about uh, restructuring this this room mm -hmm. uh, specifically. Um, but one of the reasons is for sprinkler systems, for a sprinkler system in here, uh, as opposed to there isn't. Uh, so uh, uh, in talking about sprinkler system, and instead of that, uh, reducing the size of the capacity of people that, are, that come in here and restructure the room, possibly setting it up in a different format mm -hmm. and doing a few different things and making it more applicable for the fire department. And uh, because you could, and, run, you could run your selectmen's meetings as zoom meetings. Open yes. To the public. Yeah. And that would also involve, you know, it as well. Yeah. All right. So I, I think you want to stay away from making recommendations about departments and staffing and services. That's not, that's not really the focus in the master plan, I think you want to stick with infrastructure and I agree the hardware, the capital improvements, and of course the staffing needs drive some of those things. But I don't think we I don't think we want to make those recommendations. That would be a tough. Maybe, maybe one of the recommendations would be for in order to facilitate uh, meetings, you know, public meetings. Mm -hmm. There would they should you should research what it's going to take in um, hardware and equipment to to do that 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 would be as far as the master plan would go would go on that so uh, 
what I'm hearing you is we should have a section in here uh, as part of the uh, cross-function considerations uh, uh, meeting facilities. Yeah. So I'm, I'll leave that to you, Bob, to send me as an addition. Um, uh, I will, I'll, I'll get with Josh and cook up something. And I'll, I'll draft some action items to run by you. Okay. Maybe Bob can get some information um, through some of the selectmen conversations that you guys have been having about, you know, revamping some stuff. Yep. Yeah, we we're just talking about revamping in here at the, at the time, mostly so that we okay. comply with with standards with the fire department. Yeah. And so I'd expect to see that in the section of this chapter where we talk about the building you're sitting in. Mm -hmm. Any more bits and bytes? Okay. So one of the uh, areas that's going to require uh, significant investment by the town is in the area of records management. The, yes. the hikey room downstairs mm -hmm. is uh, bursting at the seams. Oh yeah, it is. And the, the need to get some kind of uh, condensation, uh, con condensing of that material mm -hmm. uh, needs to be investigated. It will take more than a little bit of effort it's not just a matter of uh, digitizing it, but also figuring out what kind of media to put it on, because the life of media is in the area of about 10 years. So given, you know, paper lasts mm -hmm. longer than that, mm -hmm. and it's going to be hard to go away from the paper. Right. But coming up with a plan for how to attack that problem uh, will require uh, a pretty good investment on the part of the town. And I, I added this sentence about 91A because sometimes that can really be a barrier to trying to go digital with some things. Right, so part of that goal to digitize um, a lot of the, like just in particular, the land use um, case files is to have it available online. So either attaching it to, you know, the GIS system or attaching it to our assessing database or whatever it may be. Um, so that way, you know, it's available. Obviously there are some documents that you have to keep uh, in cloud, paper, but. Uh, cloud services uh, takes care of some of the media issues in terms of uh, retention. Yeah. But uh, again, you need to hire a consultant to come up with a plan for that. Well, all town, I mean, all towns are doing it. Many towns have already gone down this road. So I don't think it's necessarily a mystery overall, right. but it's going to take money and effort to figure it out for us. But it's, it's been figured out before for other towns. I, I know. One of the big things has been your, your tax maps. What I thought, I had thought from talking with Josh that you were expecting those to be digital like a few months ago. It's being worked on. Still, yeah, yeah. Is what is there? Is there a, a projected date when it will be available? No, not that I know of yet. Yeah, I, I think somewhere in here, Josh mentioned the GIS activity uh, mm -hmm. go out of the uh, mm -hmm. assessor's office. Hmm. So all the rest of these um, pieces are, some of them are short, some of them are, are lists. Um, you got files, records management, financial services was another one. 
department, mm -hmm. all the department specific considerations are, mm -hmm. are these going to be um, fleshed out as text or are they going to be lists or how are we going to use them? How are they going to be? Uh, you know, I, I made the first part of this came to me as bullets as well. And I made that in the text, but I thought, I thought this was fine the way it was. I mean, it, toy with the idea of putting it in an appendix but i but i don't think it's a bad thing having it here just like this as a reminder as as you go forward so but is there but then you then you're going to have a, an action plan out for all of these right i don't think so i think your action plan can be to keep it as a important thing in the cip keep up with the tech Technical needs and security adequately fund it. I think. Yeah. I think this. I think these bullet lists and the and the narrative that that we have from Bob and Josh provide a good support for those recommendations. I don't think. I think if you went into detail on this topic, it will be out of date in six months. Again, thinking about who the audience for the document is is. Uh, I, I, I hate the term dumbing down the technology, but somehow we need to condense it. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's when somebody looks and says, well, why do we need IT in the CIP? And why do we need to increase the budget for it? You flip, have them flip through these pages, right? Yeah. There's a, there's a lot of stuff here. There yeah. is. And that's, it, that scares me is how much information, it, when does it become too much? Yeah. When, it, when does it become just confusing or repetitive? Yeah. I mean, you, it, it shouldn't be lost, but it, I mean, you're going to, you can't do everything. You're going to have to prioritize it. And I think that's the master plan that says, you know, one of the things you do, the town has to figure out how to prioritize this stuff. Yeah. So it's not really telling you when to do it. I don't think. It just says you ought to consider it. it doesn't say when it says consider yeah. consider this and here's the people the the entities in town that are the most that should be doing the considering mm -hmm. but it doesn't give any time frame it doesn't have a, a timeline on it it says during the next 10 years right right this is what you should be doing so it's not time sensitive you know as one of the overall um action items uh for the the entire master plan is to have the continuation of a master plan committee, a standing committee of the planning board that that looks at and talks with the planning board about, well, when are we gonna to get to this? Mm. <laughs> you know? uh, and are we making any progress on, on these things? Somebody, somebody just keeps their eye on the ball. Mm -hmm. They only have to meet, I don't know, four times a year or something like that. But uh, it, it just, otherwise- All key factors. Otherwise the planning board is simply gonna take this thing and put it over on the shelf. Most likely, mm -hmm. maybe a few things will get done, but most of it will just right. sit there, just did like it did the last time. In terms yeah. of process, I think annually there could be a review by the planning board of the entire action plan uh, part of the master plan. Yeah, my my recommendation is that that be an annual joint meeting of the select board and planning. I was board. just going to say that. Yeah, I always put that in the recommendation. Oh, the planning I think, I think, board and the exec and the uh, selectmen. Three yeah. or four times a year, if the planning department comes to the selectman and gives an update, okay, or and does an update, even if they have their committee. so you don't have a standing committee, just say you have this process that you here's do. what we've done. This is where we're at right now. This is what we project to be in the next year, right? The two years, and and, and, and can the selectman say to the planning board, we think you ought to be focusing on this or that exactly. or the other thing? Yeah. yeah, I think that's important, Tara. I think you're right, but I don't, I don't think it's just one directional. I mean, it's if you have this master plan implementation committee, they should be going to the select board and saying, hey, here are the things you were the lead responsibility on and conservation commission, here are the things you were the lead on. And mm -hmm. what, do you, you know, what do you want to make the priority here and what support do you need? One of the things I just want to say that I liked about this list when I read it, these bullets, is you see the commonalities among the departments. So you see how many different departments will benefit from the GIS, for example, mm -hmm. right? So there's a lot of that when you read these, there's a lot of commonalities. 
So there's a lot of things where there'll be more bang for the buck in terms of how many departments benefit from something. Right. I, I, th I think you, you've hit on a, an important notion in that there's an economy of scale that the town can realize if it, if it does take a, a total look mm -hmm. at, at, at what these resources are and what the requirements are. Yeah, correct. So just starting, uh, can we, Tara, is it appropriate that we go back to the beginning and just kind of go through the major sections and say what still needs to be done and the other major sections of this chapter? Why well, everything, yeah, everything except this needs to be done. <laughs> well, 6.1, mm -hmm. we don't have anything. Right. We don't, we don't have anything on anything except IT. Those, those others are just some text from your natural resources chapter that I thought went better in here. So I just pasted them in here so we don't forget them. So we, like on the community facility, there's other things besides uh, dams. There's Right, that's the only re. as I said, that that's just in here so we don't forget it because I right. took it out on natural resources. Nothing is, nothing is done in here except IT. So, yeah, this would be a good way to kind of talk about where we're at with transportation. Yep, and that's me. And I'm still waiting for the RSMS um, to be completed so that I can get a lot of my information from that report. What's RSMS? Um, the road, road, surface maintenance. road surface maintenance study. Road what? Road surface maintenance study. Okay. And that's being done by the highway department. Okay. And when, they when hired a company to do it. When's that going to be done? Uh, I was told sometime in the spring. Spring being before yeah, June 21st. 20, we have 22 days left of spring. <laughs> Is a time limit on that? Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. That may only be one paragraph of this, really. I mean, we there's a lot of other things we could be putting in. I I I don't know if this is a time to talk about your other funding, but we should at some point see if you could use that to have me help with some of these things that have kind of been lagging. Um, I think that would be a good discussion at this point. Yeah. Let, let's uh, to guess to the chair, we, we go there on the number seven, maybe. So. Um, so who who's working on the rest of facilities in this 6.2? So 6.2 was Amy, um, 6.3 water supply, that was me again. Uh, 6.4 recreation was Kelly. <clears throat> that was it, right? So, um, how do we get there? <laughs> That's the question. Okay. Has anybody said that they, they can't do it? No one has stated that. Yeah. No. But they've, and we have deadlines, right? Well, um, it was a long time ago, the deadlines. But what makes me nervous is nobody's even asked me questions or said, is this what it should look like? Or here's a very rough draft. Am I on the right track? That, that silence is making me a lot more nervous than not having completed things. I know. Sure. And as All much right. as I haven't submitted anything, um, I have tried to light some fires under both Amy and Kelly to, um, you know, try to move forward with getting some information. And my, and my main concern with it isn't, it's not my concern, but it's your concern because I know what was driving the timing for you guys was trying to have this be the foundation for the next CIP update in the fall. Right, which I don't see that taking place because CIP is going to start up probably end of June, beginning of July. 
Um, so, Jessica, do you think you, you can actually do transportation and water supply? Those are your two, right? That's what I ended up being assigned with, yes. How can, I, can I throw out there if there's, is there anybody else on the committee who's already done with their sections who could help Jessica with those? My problem is that I'm trying to find the, the time to sit down and do this as well as I'm, everything else I work on. That's right. my problem. <laughs> I have spoken with Jessica and I, I, I'm willing to help you with transportation. We have talked about it a little bit and we talked about a few other things other than with the highway department um, on, on transportation. Yeah. How much of a draft do you need? What, in other words, how much information do you need on transportation? Well, it's not what I need. It's what. Oh, what are you looking for? It, it, uh, what is the. What is the. Uh, the total of transportation uh, that you need? Uh, the study of. Uh, uh, give. So I, I had sent. I had sent whoever had signed up to do it initially some examples yep. that I think would answer your question better than I can. Right? I've seen it. I've seen it in the past. I'm just trying to, so that we don't overlay too many different things and make it get double the information and make it ta take longer, keep it so that it's simple. Right. But I, I mean, I, I think I would just refer you back to the, to the samples, I examples I sent you some of that information in those examples could be cut and paste because it's principles like access management that aren't specific to a town. Mm -hmm. um, some of it is, you know, pretty easy to get from DOT website, some, right. of, you know, some of the data. Um, and I think, you know, what Jessica's getting at is it's the, it's the specifics about what your roads need that she's waiting for. That's the most important piece. I think, you know, you usually want to talk, is there public transit? What needs to happen um, for that? We know that Alton is challenging because of the state roads that come in and out of Alton, which is Route 11, 28, 28A, the main routes that come in and out of Alton. So that information is basically from DOT mostly. Right. I mean, I could see saying here are these limited access highways and and making a few sentences that summarizes what that means. It just and, and I, again, I think I think the examples I sent you would provide a pretty good cookbook. In, in terms of an issue, uh, I think traffic is something you know to be focused upon, and uh, how that's going to maybe change over the next ten years. And that's all you know the. The traffic counts are all in the DOT website. Mm -hmm. I mean, every town is, is, is going to experience, and we're experiencing it now, with increase in traffic on all roads, whether they're town-owned roads or, or state roads. There is an increase in traffic. There is an incre increase in our traffic circle uh, in our downtown areas. Uh, and we see that. Um, again, we can put that information in there, but there's not a lot we can do about it. Yes, there is. And that's where I refer you to the to the information I sent you about access management and traffic calming. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot you can do about it. So okay. I'm just going to okay. push if back on that and say, I've, I've already written the content for that. All you have to do is copy it out of what I gave you. Okay. And, and one of the, uh, well, two of the things the DOT is working on, one is West Dalton and Yes. redoing of Route 11. Yes. And the other is the bridge at Alton Bay. Right. And, and that's going to be a biggie. That's going to be a biggie. And the other one they talked about what you just said, the structure of a Route 11 uh, actually being a roundabout. Being what? Talking about a roundabout in West. In West Alton. In West Alton. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think for things like that, you want to you want to mention the big improvements coming down the pipeline from DOT. And if there are things that the town, if you guys think the town should advocate for when those improvements are made, this is the place to put that. 
Mm-hmm. Yep. Right. You know, you have some voice in things like bike lanes and what types of guardrails to some extent, not, you know, not a blank slate, but you can influence some of those things. Uh, another area to be in, in, included is the Mount Washington. Yep. And whether or not that, that uh, comes back again and whether the town makes any effort to introduce uh, uh, Uber or Lyft kinds of taxi service because mm-hmm. yep. those those are facilities that are currently missing. Yep. I Correct. I did recommend that in another town that they try to entice <laughs> that. Um, yep. So these are all good good points. And the third and the third item is close to Paul, which is the Alton Airport. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which I actually did interview Paul on that. I just haven't had a chance to write it up. And we need to talk more on that, but I can also give you some actual drawings and plans of the of what they're considering on Route 11. So you don't have to provide to her um, a whole written text like I did. What you have to give her is the facts. And then she can run with them, but she doesn't have the facts from the local level. So that's all we need really to dig up. And I think... You know, perhaps between Bob, who's had some great ideas, and you could talk together. Yep. You can talk to Scott Kimman, yep. and th- and then you'll be done. Right, I rewrite. I mean, I've rewritten everything I've received to some degree. Right, so it doesn't it doesn't matter how you write it. Don't sweat over that. Yeah. So if she's just looking for the material. Um, Correct. How about Amy? Can you talk to Amy, Bob, uh, and uh, get her to uh, move on facilities? Right. <laughs> And she did reach out to me and she asked me for all of that information about the building needs that we had acquired last year. Um, so I pointed her to where she could find that. But who can get her to line. move on it? Right. Yeah. I mean, Bob knows it pretty well. So I think that's mm-hmm. what I was thinking. Yeah. You know, let, let him shake that tree. Um, I'm shaking the tree on rotary issues. It would be better if somebody else were to shake this one. Well, I mean, look, I can... I get asked to do like a lot of things and, and I keep volunteering for stuff. I'm not going to do it. Okay. No, I'm, I was not going your way. I, I, I agree. I agree with you. <laughs> All right. So we, we're going to have to have people step up here. I got you. All right. Uh, I'd be willing to, um, I'd be willing to look at water supply because I wrote that first piece. Okay. And I can talk to the water department and say, you know, what do they, what do they think their needs are? And now I'll, I'll put some stuff together on that. How's that? Amy's Amy's piece was what? Just it was facilities. It was yeah. all all the town facilities except yeah. recreation and water and roads. Community six point two community facilities. That was that's. Oh. I gave her an outline for it and some examples. So yeah. she should be all said. If that that hasn't changed, right? She was the one initially that would have received that. Yes. Yeah, because we got to get this done, guys. Um, so, Russ, maybe I should send you what I sent whoever was doing water, or do you still have that that you could pass along? Oh, you sent it to me again. I think I might have it, but yeah, I have I, that uh, email, Tara. Okay, so if you send that along, I know I copied you on all of them, so you had that one, please. You send that to Russ. Actually, uh, Russ, it, it's in Dropbox, actually. Okay. Let me see. It's under. Um, where is it under chapter six infrastructure? I mean, I tried to make, I tried to provide outlines and examples and all for all yeah. of it. So. so if you go to that chapter six infrastructure, there's a folder entitled 5.1 transportation, which now needs to, I need to change it to 6.1. 6. I change chapter. I think with recreation, I sent Kelly an outline and all she kind of needs to do was sit down with your recreation director and a few questions on each. Yep, and I do. One for Waterville Valley, I see, and is that what you're talking about? No. That would have come from, if there's something in there for Waterville Valley, that would have come from the. Yeah, why don't you send it to me? I have trouble okay. trouble uh, finding stuff on the way yeah. Dropbox is set right, up. I'll read some of it to you. Um, and with Kelly on um, 6.4 rec- recreation, I did forward over um, the information that you had provided, Tara, I sent it over to Kelly Trundle, who's the park and rec director, Mm -hmm. um, just so that she'd be aware of sort of what types of things that we 
um, would be looking for from her. Yeah. Um, so I did kind of give her a heads up. Uh, she's very proactive with a lot, a lot of stuff. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if she's already come up with some answers to some of that information. Just trying to get both Kellys together. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, smart. <laughs> and that's good. Yeah, that'll help immensely. Because if we don't have something to talk about the next meeting, we won't have one. Yeah, no, we already, when I was going to say that when we got to that agenda item, we already don't need the June 15th meeting. I, okay. I, I mean, if I got it tomorrow, I don't think I could get it for you. So the 15th goes away. Yeah. But if we're on to that, can, can we, I think we did maybe didn't have August 17th for a couple reasons. I had been going to be away and we had initially scheduled the planning board presentation for August, but maybe we should add August 17th because we are kind of pushing some, kicking the can down the road a little bit. At four o'clock, August seventeenth would be at four o'clock. Yeah, I think that I think there were two reasons we didn't have it, but I think neither of them are relevant now. Yeah, because I I think we were under the impression that we'd be good by then, and we wouldn't need that second meeting. Mm -hmm. I had all, yeah, I had also hoped to have a vacation that month. Yeah, <laughs> that's, then, that's not happening now. Yeah, yeah. then we'd kind of be all ready to present. Um, for September, I think. Yeah, if we can get Actually. we can get these other things going. So, so four o'clock on the seventeenth. Correct. Cool. Yes. All right. So. Okay. Um, so you can you think you can get Kelly to move? I will um, reach out to Kelly again. Okay. Yep. Well, we. A suggestion is don't get stressed out. We'll, we'll get through it. No, I don't want to get stressed out. Don't get stressed I, out. I, I, I don't think that if we don't start putting our foot down on some of this stuff, it's just not going to happen. So I don't think it will happen. I, I think the more heated we get, the more people will either get upset and drop out. Um, however, I just I, think I just think we have to be careful of how much information we actually put. However, I, I for one, reacted well to having a deadline put in front of me. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I, it, some people if, don't. If some we were people... to give them some kind of a deadline, mm -hmm. uh, that's probably a, a, a positive way of approaching. We we did though, Bob. We and right. we changed it a couple times. But in terms of how much information, the answer to that is whatever you might have in the CIP in the next ten years mm -hmm. ought to be explained in here. Yep. Right. Yep. Understood. Anything you're going to want to advocate to DOT or for more public transit help or whatever ought to be explained in here. Any anything you want to change to site plan regs or subdivision regs in terms of access management or traffic calming, anything you might want to do in the next 10 years to do a transportation. Correct. Or, or other facilities. That's, yes. that's really the and then, well, it might be very uneven. So you need to fill in some gaps. Mm -hmm. right? You know, if if there's a topic you're going to want to do a lot about, like the CIP, then you want to make sure that you've covered all those things. But then there might be some holes where things aren't really an issue, but you just plug in some narrative <clears throat> to, to fill it out. Right. Right. Like if you look at my examples, I don't say a heck of a lot about airports. Usually most towns don't have one or buses or trains or whatnot, because, well, we're not doing anything about those, but I, I just have a sentence in there to fill out the transportation picture. Exactly. So, exactly. But I have a lot about- That's what, what I'm getting at. Instead yeah. of making it a long, lengthy process about transportation, we can condense it and say where we plan to go in the future, what yep. we expect in the future, where we have been and keep it. It's just informational, correct? And well, where we expect to go. It's your plan, though. I mean, it's... It is in, a plan. In five years, you apply for funding for something. That funder, well, is it in your master plan? You want to be able to show that it is. Correct. 
Okay. So we added a meeting in August. 17th, August 17th. And we took out the 15th. June 15th? June 15th, we took June out. June 15th is gone, right. Right. So um, I, I had been discouraging you from talking about that additional money until until the planning board talks about what we've given them so far because their feelings about the land use chapter is is huge in terms of what what more work we have to do right with it's a heavy lift we've made a lot of recommendations that they have to be able to get behind if when they have that discussion it's yeah well most of this sounds reasonable then we're good but if they say Oh my goodness! <laughs> then, then there's a lot more work and time for me in that. So I wasn't really clear what an additional scope of work needs to look like yet. But, but now I'm a little nervous about um, some of these other things that might need my time. And and how do we how do we deal with that? Can can this committee kind of authorize um, the chair and Jessica to to work on some wording for an amendment that gets presented to the planning board, or you know, how do we how do we make sure we're benefiting from that additional money without without really knowing right now yet what I don't know how much work I'm going to have to do on the different pieces of infrastructure. Like if they all come to me as as in as good shape as Bob's did, then then we're good. But back to do a lot of rewriting than not so much. Right, um, so question for you, Tara. So in order to um, actually have a meeting on July 6th, what is um, a sort of latest deadline that you need um, to get information from us on these remaining sections? So I'm asking- so I can give them a deadline, say yeah. hey. Bye. Yeah, no, I get it. So I gotta look at my calendar because I I am yeah. so committed to going to my camp for a week finally. <laughs> the end of end of June, and I'll come back on the fifth for your meeting. So I understand. Uh, I just came back from vacation, so I, I get it. I canceled two, but not this one. So I would say um boy, um I could block out the week of June twentieth to dig into whatever I have and make sure it gets out to you before I head out for the week. So like June 17th. Okay. So I don't have a lot going on that week. So it, I could just block it right out for that. Okay. All right. Oh, I have you. I have. Um, alternative housing. That's... I guess I have, I guess I just have you penciled in that that's when you're finally going to be able to talk about the planning board about land use. So I just had that note in there. So that's not a me thing. That's a you thing. But so, yeah, let's say the seventh, whatever I am by the 17th, we can talk about on July 6th. Okay. And and because it's going to be the first time I see it, it's going to have questions in the text when you get it back, but that's okay. It, you know, it's a good start. It, that's how it usually works with facilities is I get, um, you know, I get a draft and I, I edit some and I plant questions in the text and then we meet and talk about how to fill in those gaps. So that, that's a fine place to be by the 17th. Okay. So how do how do you want to deal with the additional funding and the and the contract? Because I think I'm concerned that we might need to do something with that before you meet again. Um, got a got any idea of uh, what the what the number ought to be? You know, no, that's been part of the problem, and like we need to talk about what else, if anything, you might want to do with that money if if really nothing besides printing the final thing then i could probably be of more help with the infrastructure pieces 
unless things go really badly with the planning board meeting. That that's why things are a little bit up in the air. Well, is there anything that you need to get you through, um, as far as you can see, <laughs> right now? You know, it's, it, it doesn't have to be all at once. We could be authorizing a piece of it, just so that you're covered. Yeah. Am I am I right on this? That the last payment from us you received was on four eight. But I don't know. 8, 2022. I don't know. I'd have to go on my bookkeeping. I bill I bill you every month. Okay. This is the this is the one I had from the last meeting. <coughs> you gave us. Right. Yeah. So that was the one on four eight. I'm not I'm not too worried about balance. I'm not too worried if I don't get it, if, if I have to sit on an invoice, but what I what I would like a better idea of is, I guess, before I offer more help with facilities, for example, I think we need to hear how things go with the planning board because. Well, that's what that's what I'm thinking as well. And, and I'm just kind of speculating, I guess, as far as um, how things went, you know, with the first couple of chapters, um, the board didn't really have any issues with anything that was presented um i don't recall them having any changes it. to it or um, but i think the land use piece they haven't seen that right no not yet that's the one that they will have concerns about if they, if they well, got to have concerns right i mean if 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 they just give it a nod then they didn't look closely at it right they they're going to need to, they're going to need to recommend these zoning amendments that we put in there so they really need to you need to make sure they actually are reading it and thinking about it and having some dialogue. That's my hope as well. And our current agreement only gets to the point where you guys are good with the plan. And then, then oh. that additional money is in part to get it the rest of the way to, to where the planning board's happy with it and to public hearing and whatnot. And what, I what, if, as well. what if, um, you can put it in like fairly soon, just in the planning board meeting as an item and let Tom It was in the last, so it was in the last month and we had such a late meeting that uh, we didn't have a chance to go over it. So schedule it again. So, so it is, yeah. it was, it was continued. And I asked them specifically to all take the time, please take the time to review this, go over it, come up with questions, comments, agreements, disagreements, whatever it is yeah. that you have, and be prepared to have that discussion at the June meeting. Do you want to have um, maybe just talk to Tom? And he have might him not be at the June meeting. And have, <laughs> well, something, you know. Because yeah. he wrote that. Yes. Yeah, so uh, I'll give Tom a call and ask him to see if he put some effort into really getting, making sure that the plane board looks at that land use section. And he ought to, he might even, he should probably just go through it and say, this is the big stuff that's in here. And you guys ought to know about it. Like well, the, the action, zoning map. <laughs> so, you well, know. Ross, I think the action plan would be the summary. Yeah, it's the action right. plan, but the, the visual is that zoning map. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because that, that's the big change. I'll give him a call. See if I can shake him loose. You know, you could even you could even have a a special workshop if you have to, just to just for that. It would wouldn't take any much of your time really. Just have Tom present it and don't wait for a meeting. Because yes, Tara's right, we're all hung up right now um, on whether this thing's gonna implode or not. Mm -hmm. You know. <laughs> Could we have a meeting like with Tom before the planning board on this? Well, it's up to the planning board to, 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 you're on the planning board, right? That's what I mean. Yeah. That's why, yeah. So, so Tom's away right now. He's got a cell phone. Right? Yeah. Not a piece in Canada. But I was just thinking right. how long is he gone? Meetings at six. We had a meeting at 530 before. Right. Right. Until after the next planning board. You know, meeting. and then we, we know we get it in no matter how busy the schedule is. Board for the planning board, we could at least get, I, I don't know if we can do something like that. I'm just asking, you know, if we could meet a half an hour before to get that done and then we don't have to, then it's, 
Or do we have to do it during an official meeting? I forgot you're on the planning board. Why don't you talk to Tom? I can talk, yeah. yeah. Why don't you do that? I don't think that I don't think the timing is the issue. It's the fact that he's just not here. But can he can he call in or something? I, I don't know. I don't know if he has great reception from Canada. Do you want to try to reach him? Do you have his contact information? I'll give I'll send it to him. Let's see. Um I mean, we, I'd rather reach out to him if, because you're not going to be at the planning board meeting on the 21st. So I would actually would rather okay. reach out to him and go over some things. So okay. that way right. it, it probably would be best. But the idea is yeah. to short circuit it because you, you know that everybody in the planning board is not going to read out all that stuff. Probably. There, I agree. Yeah. Right. So the better way to do it is let Tom and, and maybe you too say this is what's in here this is what what is really going to be um, something that the planning board has to act on and the town's going to be very interested in it because it changes the zoning right yeah you know? and so they got to be aware of that and why and in the action items and why we're recommending it you know mm -hmm. so um because otherwise this is all cascading you know and it's and we're finding we can't figure out where we're going to end up here so mm -hmm. and you, you can reach him in canada can't you or he's in canada you have yeah. a cell phone yeah i do yeah i think uh, he's on the upper side of the saint lawrence river there he's not that far out the boonies almost labrador <laughs> Really? That's that's where my partner is currently stranded on a 500 mile bike trip with a blown Achilles tendon. Oh no! <laughs> Maybe he could give her a ride. <laughs> right. Yeah, he's on the north side of the St. Lawrence, where it starts to widen out below Montreal. Yeah, no, I I know right where you're talking about. I've spent a lot of time today looking at maps of mail boats and ferries up there. Jeez. All right, so I'll I'll take care of that. I'll reach out and have a chat with Tom, and we'll. So then, then we can figure that. out. It, once that goes to the plan, where then we have a better idea of how much money we, we need to uh, tee up, so to make sure that Tara can go. Right. In the meantime, if we can get her chunks of the infrastructure section, mm -hmm. the, yes, like for water supply, I'm not going to write a whole thing on. I'm just going to say this is what the water department says they think they see as the yep. issues in the future, yep. and I said all I. All we have, that's going to be fairly short. It's going to have the section that says, this is what we have out there right now. We have water lines exactly. that go here and there. And this, this is where the wells are. And this is how much they pump. In the future, we see this. And uh, here's some action items. That's, that's about it. Mm -hmm. And I think if you had that same conversation with Tom, or with Scott, rather, Kimman, um, and then just grab a few things from him, mm -hmm. uh, that might work well for that. Because our transportation in... Alton is cars. That, that's basically it. We're not, we don't have trains. We don't have planes. We don't, well, we have planes. We, we, right. we can briefly touch on that. We can touch on the uh, traffic of boat traffic coming in and out of the bay, right. but it's mostly cars. Yeah, but what, do you, what does the town have to do to plan for things in the future? You know, that's, that's what you want to people spend your asking, time on. I've been, you know? People have been asking about what you said, Uber and, you know, um, Lyft. Lyft and things like that, that there mm -hmm. aren't those services around here. You know, right. not that I don't know if there's anything we can do about it, but yeah. that's I've, I've heard a lot of that. Sure. You know, people when they so, moved into the area that have been asking, you know, how come I can't get an Uber around here? I think there's a limousine service out yeah. of Oakboro, but there's yeah, there's no cabs or taxis or anything like mm -hmm. that. Not much of it. Yeah. Um, Public okay. transportation. So, do we need anything else? I think we got plenty to do. Um, so, what just, about the community facilities? The, that's uh, Amy and that's Amy. I'm going to talk to Amy, and I'm going to offer her a hand. Yeah. Um, can you send me the, the outline that you had out of Dropbox? I, I get in trouble every time I go there. Um. If you can email me that, that will help. Yes. So what we're trying to do is get something to Tara by the 17th of June. Yeah. All of us. Yes. That she can work with at least. Yes. And the, you know, the, the best we can do with it by then, that'd be great. Right. Yep. 
In terms of facilities, I think an outline with subject bullets would work well. Yeah. At least a foundation. Right. I, and, I, but I, I think the recommended action items too. Yeah. yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Issues and issues and either actions or areas of investigation. Yeah, I mean, typically, typically the way it goes is this is a, a description of what we have. Mm -hmm. This is what we see happening. Mm -hmm. And here's the action items. That's those are the three, that's three steps. Yeah. Okay. All right. Do you have anything more, Tara, that we need to tackle? I guess not. I think we can do till July 6th and see, hopefully we'll have a, a framework of the rest of infrastructure to yeah, great. go from. Well, enjoy the mosquitoes. I, I have a screen porch on my shed. Yeah. At, at my camp, so. <laughs> yeah, just don't go outside, that's all. <laughs> all right. Enjoy. Good night. Thank night. You. Good evening. Thank you. All right. So can we have um, for the next meeting what what has been paid out last month? Yep. Let's see if I can find it. I don't know. I, can't. I have a hard time with this. Thank you. I will I create an updated Thank you. Uh, breakdown. Thank you. Um, That's what that was. Maybe you could just do the balance. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, I'm going to reach out on a little information to see what I can get any more information on the bridge in the bay. Yeah, the bridge. But I do have a drawing and explanations of when and everything the plan for the road work on Route 11. I actually have that. I have that. I think. Do you have Yeah, I sent it to you guys. Yeah, you okay. gave me a copy of that. Okay, yeah. I have okay. a copy okay. of it too. Now, so wait, what we don't have is there were notes from the last meeting yep. from the consultant, and I haven't seen them yet. I may have that. They might have sent them to you. Um, uh, well, I had everything. Because our meeting was. Ruben. Ruben was at the meeting. No, he wasn't. I was the only one there. This is the very last one we had. Because I got the information from him. So maybe he doesn't. I gave have... it to him. Oh, okay. Never mind. I, I, had a, I didn't know that. I had a hard copy. I gave it to him. And I said, there's more notes coming. But I haven't seen them from the consultant yet. Okay. But as soon as I. Um, I that'll, I'll do that. I'll. Um, I'll send them an email. I'll send Toby Reynolds an email and say, hey, I need those notes. Where are they talking about putting in a rotary? At 11A and 11, right near West Alton yeah, Marina. West Alton Marina. Yeah. They, they wanted to. A roundabout. You have uh, two high speed sections of the road, 55 mile an hour, and it comes to this other right. improved section. They just wanted to slow it down on each end and then enter a 45 mile or 40 mile an hour section. Because it just gives the whole. Well, that would from be, a safety point of view, it gives a, this feeling of, hey, I'm changing from a high-speed road to a different kind of road and for safety purposes. So. Well, I'm going 60 all the way to Route 11, so. 55, Bob, 55. <laughs> <laughs> nice speedometer is off. State is doing that, right? Yeah, it's an improvement. Uh, and they're going to um, want to have a bike lane at least on one side, on one side. where they can yeah. put it in, and then they may have... And they've, there's one section that Guilford actually posts as a seasonal 35 mile an hour zone right, yeah. right over yeah. near Ames Farm. Yeah. That's no, that's totally separate. It's a total separate amount. Yep. And the bridge now, the bridge over here, is yeah, that well, that's, the, that's, is that's, a, that's a separate project. Right, but is that a state? Oh yeah. Yeah, that's state. So that's a state project. But last I heard, they were talking about a detour. Where, like? Well, it would take, it would go all the way to, uh, 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 Kilmington Iowa Ironworks practically. Oh wow! Really? That's the only. That's the only that's path. The only way, yeah. Unless they can have a temporary bridge. Yeah. I used, oh, oh it, in here. Yeah, I heard that too. And the other possibility, if you're talking about the, the the bridge in the bay, the possibility would be a one lane 
or a temporary bridge that goes off to the side just between the new flagpole side of the bridge where the where the um, Downing's Landing is and come back out on the other side into Irwin Marine. That's a possibility, but if that happens, I don't know what's gonna to happen to any boats coming in and out of fun. It, 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 well, it was Steve, Steve Parker would probably have something to say about that. Yeah, I know. Yep. That would be the only thing if they did that, I'm sure there wouldn't be any room for boats coming in and out of there. I can't understand. Okay. Probably have to do one lane with that light with the light. So it would probably be one lane with a light, you know, where they do those temporary lane. lights, you know, where they just have everything on one side, do one half of it, and then just do the other half. Well, they still don't. I still haven't heard 100% whether they're replacing the bridge or rebuilding the bridge. Still don't know that, that answer. No. And when are they going to start this work? It was supposed to be in 2022, but now it sounds like 2023. Oh, okay. And there won't be any more, there you must don't be any more clearance underneath it. There's talk about maybe a few inches more clearance. Yeah, because yeah, you got to meet all your driveways on either side. That's right. And then one of the problems is Irwin Marine on the opposite side and fire, fire station, the firehouse. Right. If you go too much, that messes up the entrance in and out of that. Right. So that must and be, Parker's. They must have a 10 year plan for that. Well, yeah, that must be part of a 10 year plan for that section of road, right? I, I really suspect how they that was a can that got kicked a lot. Yeah. Oh, it's been getting kicked for a long time. Yeah. Okay. I make a motion to adjourn. We're, we're done at whatever it was. 7.50. A long one tonight. Yep. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. You have a good one.